How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be giving you my top five things to do after buying a used mountain bike. Now, this is part of the larger Salsa Timberjack build series. We'll be doing a little bit of maintenance on the bike today before we do any sort of big upgrades or taking it out on any sort of big adventure rides. But these tips will be helpful to anyone who buys used mountain bikes. And I've sort of broken it down into five different categories of things to look out for and potentially repair or replace after you bring your used mountain bike home and before you take it on any sort of big rides. All right, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to inspect is your entire drivetrain and all of the associated components. That means your chain rings, your cassette, your chain, as well as your shift cables and shift housing. All of these things together allow you to shift the bike properly from gear to gear and any sort of wear or you know, breakage in any of these components can result in poor or sloppy shifting. On the Salsa Timberjack today, we're gonna to be replacing the chain because the current one that's on there is pretty worn down past the wear limit. We're also gonna be replacing the front chain ring. Now, the chain ring on the Timberjack is not actually worn down all that much, but I wanna go from a 32 tooth to a 30 tooth chain ring in order to give myself a little bit more of a granny gear so that I can climb up the really steep stuff, especially when I'm loaded down with a bunch of bike packing gear. Next up, we're going to go ahead and be replacing our shift cable and shift housing. Now, this is usually the cheapest and easiest thing to repair or replace on your bike. And I recommend doing this whenever you buy a used bike, even if it seems to be shifting fine. This gives you a sort of baseline as to when it was last done. And you know, a shift cable is a couple bucks, housing is a couple bucks, especially if you buy these in bulk, which you should if you have a lot of bikes or you do a lot of maintenance. And this is good quick insurance that you will not have any problems out on the trail. So to recap, drivetrain is very important. Make sure that your bike can shift smoothly. Today on the Timberjack, we're gonna be replacing the chain, the chain ring, and the shift housing, as well as the shift cable. I've determined that the cassette is in good condition. It does not need to be replaced, but you may wanna check it out on your bike before you set off on any big adventures. All right, so new chain, new chain ring, those two things together should make the bike run nice and smoothly. Next thing, we have to go ahead and replace the shift cable, which should be relatively easy. And we'll go ahead and do the housing while we're at it.
All right, so we're moving along here. We have the new chain ring on, we have the new shift cable on, we have the new chain on. Now let's turn our attention to the brakes. And these brakes are pretty worn, especially on the front. Let me show you actually how worn these are. Now, full disclosure, I did actually swap these out a little bit sooner because they were worn to the point that they were dangerous, but I'll show you what they were like before I changed them because I kept the original pads. So these are the original front pads. And as you can maybe see here, no, you can't really see here. I'm gonna give you a, a close up in a second here. These are completely worn down to the metal. This is not safe to ride with. So we're gonna go ahead and swap these out for some other resin pads, same brand, Shimano B01S or whatever they are. Uh, go ahead and swap those on, should be nice and easy. And then we can go ahead and continue on with getting this bike ready to go. All right, and fifth of all, you're going to want to inspect your bike's suspension system. Now, the Salsa Timberjack is a hardtail, meaning that it only has a front fork that needs servicing. And there's two different types of services you can do on a mountain bike, or at least on a fork. Uh, the first thing is just a basic lowers service, or a 50-hour service, as a lot of people call it, which entails replacing your dust seals and wipers, and replacing the fluid in the lower stanchions of your forks. You could also go one step further and do a 200-hour service, as it's called, which involves everything from the lower service, as well as servicing the dampers in the uppers of the fork. This is obviously a little bit more involved, but it does make sure that the entire fork is working properly. Now, I could probably get away with just doing the lowers on the Salsa Timberjack here, but I decided to go ahead and get the entire 200 hour kit just because it's a new bike to me and I wanna make sure it is running in tip top shape. It's only gonna take me a little bit more time to do this 200 hour service. And for the peace of mind it gives me, I think that is well worth the price. That's how you don't do that.
I almost forgot something very important. And that is there's actually a sixth or maybe seventh, depending on how you read it, tip I wanna give you guys today when you buy a used bike, and that is you wanna check your tires. And this is actually really important. Tires not only give us grip in terms of cornering, but they also give us grip in terms of braking. And if you have a worn out tire, that's going to reduce both your grip and cornering ability as well as your braking ability. Now on this bike here, the front tire is a WTB Vigilante and it's in good condition. I'm gonna keep running it a little bit longer. The rear tire, however, is a WTB Ranger and it's really rather worn. The center tread is basically a slick. And I don't think it's really giving me a lot of grip. So we're gonna go ahead and swap that out for a new Ranger, same tire. Now I do like these tires. Uh, for now, I haven't tried anything else in this 27.5 plus configuration. I may in the future try something different. For now, I'm gonna stick with what's on there because it works well enough. WTB Ranger on the rear, Vigilante on the front, grip in the front, speed in the rear. I think that's a good combination for bike packing. So let's go ahead and get this onto our rim. And then our bonus sixth tip when getting a used mountain bike is more of a general tip, and that's make it your own. Find stuff that works for you, both in terms of looks and aesthetics, but also in terms of functionality. And so today for the Salsa Timberjack, we're gonna be doing two changes to the bike in order to make it function a little bit more how I want it. The first thing is I'm going to be replacing the annoying Garmin rubber band mount with a more solid clamp on mount like this one. These are rather cheap and they're much more solid than the ones that use the rubber bands because those tend to spin, especially when hitting drops, rocks, whatever, and then it flips your entire Garmin over, especially if you have a bigger one, like an 830, 840, 1030, 1040, something like that. You're gonna want something a little bit more stable, and this works well for that purpose. Finally, we're going to be replacing the grips. Now, obviously grips are a very personal choice. Everyone has their favorite grips. For me personally, I love my Lizard Skins Evo Charger lock-on grips. Uh, these, I know these, this is a Rev Grips box, but uh, the person I bought these from shipped it in this box for some reason. These grips are, for me, the perfect blend of comfort and grip. They're really nice and soft, but this sort of waffle pattern here ensures that you have a nice solid grip on the bike, even when it gets damp and slippery. All right, and there you have it. The Salsa Timberjack is fully tuned up, ready to ride, ready for some upgrades, ready for some bike packing. Now, I hope that these sort of things to look for when buying a used bike will help out anyone who does buy used mountain bikes. And then finally, the final thing I did, which I didn't necessarily show, but I actually did some zip ties on the cables here on the front 
and then along the rear triangle to hold the brake line and the derailleur uh, housing, I replaced the uh, cable clips because those kept coming off and I was actually missing two. So I just used zip ties and I used this sort of like pinkish red, which sort of matches the, um, the rubber band on the fork. And I think the pink sort of goes well with the turquoise with the teal, whatever this color is. I don't know, what, let me know what you guys think. Does this look good? Uh, I was trying to figure out what sort of accent color I wanted to do with the bike and I kind of landed on pink. Just kind of go with like a Miami Knight sort of thing. Um, I don't want to overdo it with the pink because obviously I think you can definitely overdo that, but maybe, you know, valve stems, uh, maybe some bottle cages or the bottle bolts, not the whole cage, but just the bolts. Um, I could potentially do the stem bolts. Let me know what you think. Is that a bad idea? Hot pink? Or is that gonna look cool? I don't know, you guys let me know. All right, so that's all that we did today on the Salsa Timberjack. Uh, I think that this deferred maintenance on the bike was really rather important to do. Now I am very confident that the bike will hold up, that it's not gonna break down on me, that I'm not gonna have any major mechanical issues. Again, anything unforeseen is possible, but in terms of maintenance stuff, cables, brake pads, all that stuff, I think we're good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and take the bike out for a spin hopefully get a nice impression of how this maintenance has transformed the bike. And then once we finish that, we're gonna go ahead and get into some ideas for our next upgrades on the bike in order to make it a little bit more what I want it to be. And then in the near future, we're gonna take her out for the first maiden bike packing trip and see how she does loaded up. Thank you for watching. I hope the video was helpful. I hope it was enjoyable. Let's go for a ride and I'll catch you in the next one. We are out here. Henry Coast State Park, probably my favorite place to mountain bike. Well, it's up there at least, maybe second favorite, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, see how all these maintenance items we've done on the Timberjack have transformed the bike. Now, obviously nothing major, but just to sort of see how the bike handles and rides as it's, or when it's set up the way it's supposed to. So just a little short loop today. We're gonna do this Jim Donnelly climb, which is a pretty long climb, probably about 30 or so minutes. And then just one pretty fun descent, just to sort of get a feel for everything. And that's about it. I've been climbing now for about six or seven minutes and I can give some first impressions on the sort of maintenance we've done to the drivetrain. So obviously new shift cable makes the shifting a little crisper. That's been obviously nice. But the real star of the show here is the upgrade to the uh, to the chain ring. Going down to the smaller one, I've still got a couple gears in reserve. I'm on a pretty steep section here. Now Obviously when I load down with bike packing gear, that won't be the story, but it does give me a little bit of leeway, I think, where I have that granny gear and probably when I am loaded down, I should still be able to ride most of this without having to walk. So that's been really awesome. New chain is nice and silent, just how I like it. And yeah, you know, this drivetrain, it's just working as it should. We do have one really steep hill right at the end of this climb that I've never cleaned. And I don't think I'm going to today just because it is insanely steep and I'm not strong enough, I'll be honest. I've only seen one guy on a real bike do it. I've seen a couple e-bike guys do it, but that's not the same thing. But with the smaller chain ring, let's give it a shot. I already gave myself a whole litany of excuses to not clean it. And yeah, I'm probably not gonna clean it, but we'll see how far I get. Maybe I'll get further than my previous best. That would be pretty cool. And if I can clean it, that's really awesome. All right, so here's the wall, as you can see in front of us. It might not look all that steep on the GoPro. The GoPro effect is real, but, this thing is steep. I'm just gonna give it a shot. Never cleaned it. If I can get to those rocks right near the tree, then I'm good. The problem is I can never make it to that point, but that's sort of where it starts to flatten out. I 
think if you make it there, you're good. <sighs> Try to hug the right side here. Oh, there's a little more grip, maybe. Nope. Okay. Well, I'm just not strong enough. But that's okay. My wall climb attempt did not work out. But um, I still think that this smaller chain ring is a huge upgrade. On this section here, one's well, about to come up right now, this is still really steep. This is like, I think 19-ish percent, maybe even 20. And, you know, I'm still spinning pretty quick the whole way up this. I've got plenty of grip. That new tire, the new Ranger, definitely a welcome improvement over the worn out one. For now, I'm gonna stick with these WTBs, the Vigilante on the front and the Ranger on the back until I experiment a little more and decide whether or not I like them. All right, so starting the descent now, interested to see the condition of the trail here given the rain damage, but I guess we'll find out as we work our way down. Hopefully it's not too bad. All right, so initial impressions that new brake pads obviously are nice, but these brakes still are a little bit lacking in power. Um, you know, obviously, I know they're not four pistons or whatever, but they just feel a little, a little weaker than I'd like them to feel. So, I do think that some new brakes is going to be one of the upgrades I end up doing. Uh, second thing is, I wish I had a dropper. You know, I can just really feel the seat between, between my legs right now, and it feels like I can't get as low as I want. So I think a dropper would be nice. The trouble is finding one that I can still use with bike packing bags. From what I understand, that's kind of the issue with droppers on bike packing bikes. You know, some people say you don't need them, and yeah, you probably don't, but you know, if I'm bike packing and there's a trail remotely like this, like I do want to be able to put my seat down at least a little bit just to get it out of my way. So I'm gonna look into that. Um but yeah, uh, all in all, I mean, bike does feel good. The grips are way better than the old ones. I do really like these lizard skin grips. I find that they're comfy, they are grippy. Um, they're good with gloves and without gloves. I almost always ride with gloves, but I do sometimes forget them. And so, you know, if that's the case, it is nice to have grips that are still nice on the hand. All right, this lower part of the trail seems to be in a little better condition. But yeah, you know, I think all in all, the bike's running well. It's honestly probably ready for a bikepacking trip, but there are a few upgrades that I would like to do before I take it on anything major, just because I want to, you know, enjoy the bike to its full potential, and I want to feel, want to feel comfortable on it. Yeah, I think the, the brakes are really the main thing that have to go. These are just not that powerful. It, it is a somewhat heavy bike. I'm also not a smooth rider, as you can very clearly see here. So having powerful brakes, especially ones that sort of stop you pretty quickly, you know, kind of on a dime, that's pretty important for me. I know some people don't like the quote-unquote on-off nature of the Shimano brake system, but you know, for me, just the way I ride, the fact that I'm not very smooth, like I like knowing that I can slam on the brakes and stop if I need to. So I think I'll probably be looking at some Shimanos. Which ones is the question, but we'll we'll figure that out later. I always make this mistake here. It is the left. Yes, it is left. I really do wish I had a dropper. There we 
go. Definitely feel like I have good grip with these tires. I'm probably running them a little too inflated. You know, I imagine that with my weight and the size of them, I could probably be in the low 20s, high teens. I'm riding them at 24 right now in the rear, 25 and about 23 in the front, which is probably high. It does feel a little bit, a little bit hard. I think I could knock those down just to have a little more grip. But like I said, the grip on the new tire is good. The Vigilante in the front feels really planted. I haven't noticed any sort of washing out or anything like that. Yeah, good bike, good trail, good ride. So, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you, well, okay, I should probably... So I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. Hopefully you have subscribed so you can stay tuned for future Salsa Timberjack and Santa Cruz Highball videos and all that other kind of good stuff. And I'm looking forward to catching you all on the next one. So thank you all again for watching. See you next time.